Yeah. Mike, I guess there were stretches there in the second quarter, third quarter, where maybe you guys didn't play your cleanest ball. I guess what do you think of the way your team kind of handled that and still was able to come out with a big win? Uh, well, they're really explosive. You know, I think I, I, I think they're really explosive. Uh, first of all, they'll tempo you. Second of all, the running back's good. Third of all, they have a few good receivers, and you can sort out what their names are. Um, and then the, the quarterback, I think the quarterback's really good. Uh, kind of a stud, um, you know, like, uh, well, he's really fast. He's a guy that can get all of it if you don't keep a lid on him. And then he keeps it alive back there long enough that your coverage breaks down. And, uh, <clears throat> and maybe not perfectly accurate, but he can throw it forever. So I thought that guy, uh, that guy played really well. And I think he also gave... Uh, you know, opened up other things. The run, not just his, but other people's runs. And then uh, also the the passing game. And, and uh, you know, he really is, uh, he might be the fastest quarterback in the conference. I don't know. The, you know, so good for him. And he's kind of hard to tackle. I thought we could have got to him a little more. We did some good things, so. <clears throat> Coach, for the second straight week, no sacks for your offensive line, but this time it was against the, the team that leads the conference in sacks. You know, wh what did they do well, and what can you say about their performance? I thought we blocked pretty well. I thought we were pretty good up front, got a, a lot of yards on the ground, and that's kind of you know, what they gave us to a certain extent. And then, um, uh, but, uh, you know, cause, but we did throw it and did run it well, and I do think that's more of a credit to uh, our offensive line, and um, and then, you know, I thought Will did a good job uh, managing the game, and uh, uh, so we did have a consistency that I liked pretty well. We, you know, we um, <clears throat> stubbed our toe a few times and uh, didn't finish a couple drives, but uh, generally speaking, we were consistent, and I do think the more consistent team won this game. Coach. Um your team this year, and most of the time, every every time an opposing team has made a run, your guys have responded to regain momentum. Is that more of a consistency thing or experience thing that you're seeing this year? Probably both. Uh, we played together a little longer, um, so I think that's helped. And then also, uh, um, you know, we've practiced well, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know, I think they've. You know, a lot of those guys have played together at least a little bit, and so I think uh, that's helped. And I think that, uh, um, you know, now there's some kind of older guys that some of the younger guys can learn it from. I keep getting ready to say we're an older team because it feels like that because, you know, some of these guys started as freshmen, and I still have nightmares thinking what that looked like. Um, but, um, you know, well, now they're a lot older, so they're redshirt sophomores. So. You know, heck, uh, yeah, don't get tired of them. A bunch of these guys are going to be here forever. Robbie. Coach, uh, your running backs touched the ball 46 times, almost 300 yards, had your, your best day running the football since you've been here. How much has that part of the game evolved, you think, uh, over the last three years, especially with Dylan and <coughs> Woody? Well, I think our, I think we got a couple uh, – I actually think we have three really good running backs, and then – um, and you want them to touch the ball, you know, it kind of a, you could look at it this way. You had uh, Dylan on the ground and Woody through the air, and they both had a bunch of yards. Like if you come add up uh, and you look like a guy that's really good in math and things, I mean, because that's why everybody goes into journalism, because they love math. And, and to be perfectly honest, I hated math, so I actually thought about journalism for that particular reason. But... Um, the, uh, uh, the you know those backs the the the, the backs had uh, they might have had as many yards as the rest of the team combined. I don't think quite, but it's probably kind of close. Maybe they did, and, and Brandon will tell you he's really good at math. And so then, um, but the, yeah, I mean that's the thing. I mean those guys are kind of. The Warriors back there, you want them to have the ball. And, and not only that, just for good measure, you're going to ask them to block also. So um, <clears throat> I thought they had a good game. I thought that um, our offensive line, um, 
getting uh, kind of uh, more consistent and blocking on the second level better, I think, is key. And then I think that uh, just sort of the timing of everybody working together, you know, where it kind of tucks in more of the corners, I guess. I, you know, I don't really know how to describe it, but, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, we just go smoother and quicker and, you know, less, uh, less of that my bad crap. Um, yeah, I, I don't know who invented my bad, but, uh, you know, I, I, just because you have a my bad doesn't mean you're supposed to get away with it the way I look at it. But anyway, go ahead. Coach, uh, here in the back, um, just talk about your defense today, just giving up seven points in the second half. It seems like, again, momentum changing plays as well, and just being able to, to stymie the, the Razorbacks attack pretty much for most of the day. Well, the one thing I thought they did a good job, because we, we did let the Razorbacks uh, move the ball. Let's not a good word. I mean, the Razorbacks flat out decided they were going to move the ball, and they did. Okay, but um, the uh, the one thing, we kept playing every play, kept battling every play, made them execute as many plays as we possibly could. And uh, and then, you know, and, and in some cases uh, broke them, in some cases got the ball back. Like, you know, that stuff, somebody gets a long play, well, we're going to tackle them anyway, you know. We're going to go ahead and tackle them anyway and, uh, and you know, make them earn every bit of it, and they might not get it. And uh, they definitely didn't on one, maybe both, I can't remember, but. Yeah. Yeah, when you have those three turnovers on downs in your own territory, two inside the 10-yard line, what does that do for the team and the offense and just getting the momentum back on your side? Well, just what you said, it is a turnover. And uh, it is a turnover with, uh, I guess, the understanding that the other guy selects the field position. <clears throat> but. Um, I think that uh, well, I think it was good. I mean, we were tough on fourth down, and uh, it was key to be tough, and it was also uh, key to be ahead. You know, so that uh, in some cases they had to go for it on fourth down when maybe they didn't want to. Coach, talking to the SEC Network quarterbacks yesterday, they said one of the Will's great strengths is he just doesn't give on plays. He keeps looking downfield and doesn't drop his eyes. Was was that what made those two scramble touchdowns possible? I think so. Uh, one of them, one of them, I thought he could have thrown earlier, and, you know. But if you're late on it, you don't want to force the thing, and so he's he's pretty good about not forcing things, which is a good quality. And then um, the other one, they had him pretty well covered, uh, you know. And <clears throat> even now, I don't know how he threaded it into <clears throat> to Austin there. You know, that uh, <clears throat> there's not a lot of guys or receivers or quarterbacks that have a lot of completion receptions that look quite like that. I mean, Brett Favre might have, a, you know, a couple, but, uh, you know, not a lot. I mean, because he fit that in uh, in a very impressive fashion. I don't know how well you saw it, but <clears throat> that's one play I did see extremely well, and it, it really was quite impressive. Coach, today during the game, Will Rogers <coughs> set the SEC career completion record. How impressive has it been to watch him rewrite all these records at this point in his career? It was good. It was good. If we if he threw for six more yards, he would have set the 400 uh, yards a game record. I think he might already have it, though. But if he does, he might as well try to get it again. But I don't know, six yards. Uh, one of those guys... Uh, uh, Brandon will check everybody's homework and hopefully they're off by six yards. We'll see. Hey, Coach. Um, Emmanuel Boards, he had an interception today, had two last week. What's it like to know, you know from a coaching standpoint, how important is that for you to have that guy who seems to always be there right when you need him to be to always you know, pick it off from the other team? Uh, it's critical. I mean, he's... Uh, <clears throat> He's explosive, um, a really quick first step, which I think is key. Uh, the other thing, he's you know he's a longer target than you think. He's got more range to him than you think. And <clears throat> the other thing, if you do kind of a highlight film of some of them that he's caught, even going through practice, I mean, uh, some of them are quite remarkable catches. You know, they're, he can catch some balls that other people can't catch especially at that position. 
Mike, you were just talking about the records that Will had, and uh, I think he still leads the nation in, in passing touchdowns. You said at media days in the summer that he belonged, you know, in the Heisman conversation. Do you think he's backed that up and still belongs in that conversation now, approaching the midway point of the season? Uh, I don't think there's any question whatsoever, and uh, you know, I'm extremely curious who somebody thinks is ahead of him, and. Uh, you know, and, and typically what it is is, and there's a lot of this going on nowadays, um, you know, somebody just selects the biggest team that they can think of and, you know, the ones that they think, you know, might go to the playoffs or be good down the stretch or the ones that are close, closest to big media bases. And then some of them will just randomly stick a guy on a list who hadn't even done anything. And that happens all the time. So you can think about the absurdity of that, and that'd certainly give you a good article to write. Matt, coach in the back here. Uh, good to see you again. David Edelstein from yeah. JTV, uh, CBS, and Jackson. As you've talked about kind of watching your team just grow together, get older together, and perform better over these years, what are you feeling as a coach on the sideline that's just most impressed you or that you feel like you're worrying less about uh, coaching these guys during the game because they're – just more capable together. Yeah, we're less erratic. You know, we're just less erratic. We're like, you know, you're not begging some guy to, uh, you know, to, to uh, be up and bring energy. Uh, we used to kind of be on a roller coaster all the time. Something bad would happen. You'd have to coax everybody to be happy. Something good would happen. You'd have to refocus them in. We've got a we've got a more steady nature to us, which I think has definitely helped. Some of that has to do with some of the leadership we have um, <clears throat> with players on our team, which I think has been helpful. And then, um, you know, you have a bad series. You know, they'll come back swinging, and then uh, you have a good series, and you know that your chances are pretty good to have another high effort series. Although you do kind of try to keep an eye on all those things. And then I think as a result, um, all three sides of the ball in a lot of cases have complemented one another. Joel. Along those same lines, Coach, the last three weeks you guys have been, you know, pretty complete at a lot of areas of, of football. And uh, just how proud are you of the response that you guys have had the last three weeks? You know, coming out of Baton Rouge was obviously a disappointment, but the, the response that you guys have had here at home over this three-game stretch. Well, I think it's been great. I mean, being here at home is outstanding. I mean, can you imagine, you know, if, if the game started right now, can you imagine what the energy in that stadium would be like? You know, I mean, um, you know, I mean, you know, you know, eleven o'clock game. I mean, that's that's a pretty sweet deal for the opponent as far as the energy in a stadium. You know, um, but no, I think I think our fans have been fantastic. I think that. They create a great atmosphere and uh, a great uh, high energy, uh, winning, supportive atmosphere. And uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, and you know, those uh, late afternoon, early e evening games are really special because then they, you know, just let it rip uh, with uh, you know full bore. So. Coach, you kind of made headlines years ago with those huge offensive linemen. People kind of likened it to Space Invaders. But this group that you have, maybe not the prototypical air raid Mike Leach offensive line, you, maybe what does it say about those guys who are maybe a little bit undersized and how well they're playing for you right now? Well, I think they're doing a good job, you know, and, and uh, we have a little better feet than some of the O-lines that I've had. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, and I've always been one that likes getting as big as possible um, <clears throat> because, you know, you're, uh, when you really get good, you can marinate them in the weight room for a year or two, you know, and then, and then you get the feet right from there. But uh, uh, I have always liked big, though. You know, and it's funny. Uh, oh, I remember growing up, um, you know, two really good teams. You had the... You had the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they were always their offensive line was always small. When I was at Kentucky, I had the opportunity to meet Dermonte Dawson, uh, and then also I met Mike Webster one time. What a, you know, I mean, that was just amazing. But and so then, um, but they always had small, really good feet, really active guys. And then you had the Oakland Raiders, and they just had monsters. I mean, just big, big people, and uh, I mean. And, uh, you know, it's a long ways just to even run around them, you know. So, no, I'm a, 
uh, I'm a big old line guy, and I make sure everybody in that room knows O line's the most important position. But they better uh, carry that responsibility like that too.